G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel where we're continuing uh, this new 18 team series I've got where I'm going through all the 18 clubs in reverse alphabetical order and this time I'm talking about some New Year's resolutions for season 2024 and in today's video we are talking about the St Kilda Football Club. So I've done uh, Western Bulldogs, uh, West Coast, Sydney up to this point on the channel and today we're doing the Saints, we're going to move all the way through Adelaide. If you are a Saints fan that is looking for St Kilda specific content, I have done a couple of St Kilda videos this year in different playlists and I'll include them as a link to this video. If you click up in the top right corner of this video, uh, you can find those videos specifically. I talk about their 2024 best 22, and I also talk about what their team might look like in three years. And uh, today it's all about the New Year's resolutions and specifically just outcomes the Saints want to try and achieve in 2024. It's not as simple as just goal setting, uh, but things that if they tick these little boxes, it might lead to a greater outcome overall for the St. Kilda Football Club. One thing I'll do as well is shout out the Saints team TV YouTube channel. If you're a St Kilda fan and aren't aware of Saints TV on YouTube, you're missing out. They do great stuff. Um, in particular, Jake, he does a great job of covering uh, the St Kilda Football Club in terms of club-specific content. So just a little tip for you if you're a Saints fan looking for more Saints content. But while you're there, you might as well consider subscribing to True Footy if you haven't already, because we do uh, lots of AFL content generally. And in today's video, I'm going to have a crack as an Eagles fan at talking about what St Kilda might want out of 2024. So for a little bit of context as the Saints, the framework in which we're going to look at this, uh, obviously a team that made the final in 2023 after a really good start to the season and probably just fell away, maybe not to the same extent as 2022. That was much more of a severe fall away. Uh, but the way they sort of got into the finals this year, it looked like a team that had just sort of run out of legs when you compare it to the first two months of the season where they were like, oh shit, St Kilda might be pretty damn good this year. And you know what? They finished sixth on the ladder and they made the finals and uh, that is a really successful first season under Ross Lyons. So we're going to look at uh, different things that they can achieve to try and improve or at least consolidate that position going into 2024. So the first one I will highlight for the St Kilda Football Club, and this has been a common thread with a couple of other teams I've done, but uh, simply have a better run of injuries. Now, I know this is a resolution and injuries are largely out of a club's control, not to the, not to the full extent. Obviously, strength and conditioning comes into that as well, but just giving a pretty solid preseason with limited injuries, because when you compare it to last year, I think they entered round one with 14 injured players on their list. Those included Max King, Tim Membry, Seb Ross, Jack Billings, Zach Jones, Nick Caulfield, and Jack Hayes, and some other ones that I'm missing there as well. So some pretty big names on that list. And the fact that St. Kilda actually came out in the first two months of the season, I think they won six of their first eight and achieved what they did was actually a really commendable performance. Uh, you consider Max King only played 11 games last year, Tim Membry only seven. You have to give credit where it's due, and St Kilda were injury hit last year. So if they can have a season where you know they, they get their players not underdone and stuff like that, and they're fit and firing, uh, potentially they could improve on what was a fairly successful season in 2023. Let's talk about uh, one of the more interesting weaknesses of the St Kilda Football Club in 2023 was probably just a lack of scoring power. It's kind of flip side of their biggest strength, which I'll talk about in a minute. But uh, the issue was probably converting inside 50s to scores. They were ranked last in the competition at 39.7%, which apparently is the eighth lowest percentage of inside 50s to scores in AFL history, which is startling. And I will I will throw in the, the context there and that say that Max King, who is their biggest key forward, well, physically biggest, but also probably their best target going inside 50. He only played 11 games. Tim Membry also played seven. So their hands, they were playing with one arm tie behind their back to some extent. And I will give credit as well, the small to medium types are pretty good on that list. In particular, Jack Higgins and uh, Dan Butler, they both had career best seasons in terms of goals. I think Higgins kicked 36 goals, Dan Butler kicked 33. We also saw some really good output from Machido Owens, who had a career best year. He kicked 26 goals from 23 games. Philippou also came in and looked like one of the uh, one of the better rising star candidates from last year, as sort of a, a forward who I think will transition into being a midfielder. But the small to medium types did do fairly well, considering it's just the overall forward line mix didn't really function. How much of that due to injury? Well, you give them a bit of a let off, but they were also 12th in the league for generating inside 50s to begin with. So their scoring in general wasn't strong. They were bottom four for goals this year. So the fact that they played finals actually in and of itself is quite impressive when you look at those stats in particular. So overall, what I'm saying is the resolution is find a better forward line mix, get the ball inside 50 more often and find a way to be more efficient with those inside 50s. And like I said, step one, having more fit players, in particular, Max King and Tim Membry, should fix this logically. 
But on a more positive note, uh, let's talk about their biggest strength, which was uh, being pretty much the best defensive side of the competition. And that's their resolution to remain the best defensive side of the competition. I think that's, uh, that's fair to suggest. We saw Ross Lyon have an immediate impact in his first year as coach, and that doesn't often happen when a new coach comes in and tries to implement a game style. It felt, it felt like St. Kilda adapted to the Ross Lyon defensive Dow way quite well. They conceded just 71.6 points a game. That's number one in the AFL. So yes, yeah, statistically, the best defensive side in the competition. We also saw Cal Wilkie have a career best season. He was All-Australian full back. Jack Sinclair also received a second All-Australian jumper, two players in their back line. So it's fair, fair to suggest that their, their one wood was their defense. So if they can consolidate that, re remain at least one of the best defensive sides in the comp while also being more efficient inside 50, so the path to St Kilda becoming a very good side is very, very clear, which I suppose is a positive thing in itself. Now, the other thing I'll say is a new resolution, and I use the term resolution a little bit loosely because sometimes it's about improving things that are already good. Sometimes it's about improving weaknesses. I'll say continue to develop their outside run and forward 50 entries. And this is something that has been really obvious with their list management moves, the improvement and push towards their outside game. So getting speed and class on the outside has been really reflected with a lot of their their trades and selections in particular in the draft. I'd say, I said this in another video, it's been previously a bit of a one-pace workman-like midfield, not a bad midfield, just a little bit workman-like for lack of a better word, but I think they've really balanced that out when you consider you know, Mason Wood sort of playing as a wingman. Liam Henry, they've just traded and hasn't played for them yet. Uh, we'll see the evolution of guys like Philippou, Wilson, and Collard. Even Wangeline Miller, even though he's a back half player, still has that speed and in particular, that class and distribution as an as an outside player, even though he's a defender. Um, I think there's been a clear push to this and the continuing to develop that will serve St. Kilda really, really well. And it probably is one of their best avenues to generating more inside 50s and also cleaner inside 50s. So to summarize, the resolution is uh, to continue developing this as a as a potential strength. They've recruited well for it. It's about making it happen on field, whether Philippu pushes up the ground into a bit of a more of a midfield role, maybe on the wing. Same thing with Darcy Wilson, giving him games, getting Liam Henry to play his best football, driving the ball inside 50. Uh, it's a wait and see, but it would be nice to see that turn into a bit of a strength for the Saints. The next resolution I have is just to improve the bad ends to the season. So like I said, 23 wasn't as bad as 22. So at one point in 2022, they were eight and three and then fell from fourth to 10th in a matter of weeks. I can't remember the specifics, but I found an article that said it was a matter of weeks. So that was the narrative of 2022. And in 2023, it, there was a similar trend, although obviously not quite as severe. So they started the year really well. They won six of their first eight games. But then after round 10, we saw them lose to the Hawks. We saw them lose to the Tigers. We saw them nearly lose to the Eagles in Perth straight after that massive loss to uh, to Sydney. I think that was the right timeline. Uh, they lost to, uh, the Gold Coast Suns. They only beat North by eight points. So look, they still made the finals. They, they still closed out the season a lot better. So, having said that though, I still see a dichotomy between the St. Kilda we saw at the start of the year and the St. Kilda we saw at the end of the year. Now, why is that? I maybe one theory is because they're such a good defensive pressure side, maybe they just couldn't run out four seasons. That's one option. So maybe fitness, you know, again, it ties back to having a better injury run and, and pre-season in terms of injuries and getting through players on their programs. But either way, I think uh, just being able to close out the season better, they closed it out slightly better in 23, but they would want to avoid that happening in 2024. Let's talk about some of their best young guns that I do think they've drafted and recruited really well in this space in recent years. So uh, a few players that I'd like to see exposed a little bit more to some midfield time. I talked a little bit about Philippou. He had a, a really good debut season as a half forward. He played 21 games, had about 13 touches a game, three marks, and he kicked 13 goals as well. So he kind of, at the moment, is a dynamic uh, damaging medium sort of uh, forward type, but I do see his evolution probably as turning probably into more of a bit of a loping midfielder that can damage you on the outside and then drift forward. Um, that being said, he, he's a pretty skinny kid still. It's going to take time to grow into his frame. I think he's about 6'3 or something like that. So I would just like to see him a little bit more around stoppages this year just to experiment what that looks like. Apparently he's doing pretty well in the endurance drills and stuff like that. So if it's a case of his tank, that seems to be on the improve for sure. I must say I got that tidbit from the latest Saints 
TV video, Five Saints to Watch this year that Jake did. So go check that out if you haven't already. Windhag's another one who has been, I think, you know, at AFL level has proven he can be a pretty good tagger and is still young in his development pathway as to becoming a genuine midfielder. But that is someone, it could be beneficial in the medium term to, to give more time at stoppages and center bounces and stuff like that. I think he played as a sub a little bit in 2023. So exposing Philippou and Windhager to more serious midfield time and even maybe Machido Owens, who was sort of drafted, if I'm not mistaken, as a bit more of a midfielder forward. And he's kind of been a bit more of a tall target or an undersized third tall a little bit at AFL level so far. And he did that with great success, kicked 26 goals from 21 games. But maybe he can see some more increased midfield time going forward because he does have the tools to be a very dynamic midfielder. So I'm not saying deploy him entirely as a midfielder in 2024. Same thing with Philippou. But some exposure in that role and uh, getting some opportunities to impact at stoppages, I think could be something that secure to keep an eye on this year. Just keeping an eye on those top level talents they have on their list and seeing what they can get out of them from a development point of view by exposing them to some more serious midfield minutes. The next one is probably a bit more of a minor one, but I'll, I'll mention it in any case, probably to, to extract some value out of uh, someone like a Paddy Dow who they traded in from Carlton. There's a bit of midfield depth. So on the St Kilda website, they described him as being renowned for his ball winning and clearance abilities. So uh, unlike a Liam Stocker who has become a defender and, you know, had a pretty good year for them. He actually played more football for them last year than I realized. He played 23 games and had 17 touches a game and seemed to have some potential as a medium-sized defender in that team. But Dow, they're obviously highlighting as a genuine midfield depth option. So again, it's not make or break, but it would be nice to see him come in, um, you know, for his own sake as much as anything and prove a few people wrong and that he can become a uh, genuine role player at AFL level at the very least. He played 73 games for the Blues, only played 10 games last year, but did have 4.2 clearances a game. So for a guy that didn't get a lot of the footy, only had 16 touches a game, four clearances is actually kind of disproportionately high. So maybe there's potential there as a genuine clearance mid at AFL level, considering as well those genuine clearance types do take a little bit longer. So anyway, in a fresh environment, it'd be nice to see Paddy Dow um, sort of make the most of that move to St Kilda and St Kilda get a little bit of value out of what is kind of a money ball move like they did with Stocker. The final point I'll make is the most broad and vanilla one. And I would just say to simply consolidate their finals position and make finals back to back this year because it does seem like reading the vibe a little bit from St Kilda fans, there seems to be a little bit of a chip on their shoulder where they feel like they achieved you know, well in 2023, obviously made the finals, really productive year, good first year on the Ross line, moving really positively, I think, in terms of the way they've recruited and I think they've picked up a lot of guys with upside. But there still seems to be some doubt around St Kilda. So why that is, you know, it's not really for me to say. There seems to be a perception out there that they won't, you know, necessarily play finals in 2024. And I, I see the potential. Again, I'm not going to throw any predictions in this video, but I have absolutely no doubt that their minimum expectation for this year will be to play finals. And I do think it's not necessarily essential for them to be pushing into the four yet. I think if they can consolidate with another year of playing finals, there's enough young players in this team to suggest that there's going to be a longer window when it finally arrives. I think they're a team that is probably pre-window, if that's a term. Um, so getting some more finals experience this year, proving a few people wrong, and uh, building some more legitimacy in the belief in this St Kilda team is certainly going to be something they want to achieve in 2024, which is probably the most redundant point I've made in this video. But nonetheless, I think that's what their focus will be. So anyway, guys, that is my take on the St Kilda Football Club and their New Year's resolutions for 2024. By all means, pick me up on stuff you disagree with or that I potentially got wrong, uh, but also add in a few other resolutions you, you have for your team in St Kilda. And if you don't go for St Kilda, I appreciate you watching this video and uh, stay tuned because I will be doing every club in the AFL all the way through the Adelaide Crows sometime in January. And then hopefully it'll almost be pre-season and then we can talk about, um, well, I'll probably start another 18 team series, let's be real. But anyway, guys, hope you're enjoying this content. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the comments. Cheers.